Okay, folks, nobody wants to watch Trump. So, <clears throat> somebody had suggested that I do one of these videos because I've been posting the pictures of my diecast cars. Okay, so I figured I'd do a special one. My very favorite diecast car from when I was a very young man, little boy, um, was this. The Matchbox 1968 Cougar. Not this exact one. I mean, this is a replica of that same car. This I've had for about 15 years. Oh, sorry. Copyright date on there somewhere. And normally I open them up, but this one I'm not going to. Because I have a bunch. A bunch bunch a lot of them and I have different brands so this is a matchbox super fast and the detail on this is okay now this was when I bought this was probably a three dollar car a few years ago uh, because of the anniversary the 35th anniversary but this is a standard matchbox. Actually, this one is fairly nice for a standard matchbox because this has some painted details. You can see the Mercury logo and the tail lights are painted, but it's got a plastic base. But, and uh, painted grill. While this one is a Hot Wheels with a black plastic grill, black plastic um, rear taillights, plastic base, and the wild decals that they call tampos. Okay? So, this is the type of car that you get for a dollar. And this one, believe it or not, is also a dollar. Again, this is a matchbox. This one here is a Hot Wheels. No painted tail lights. Not too bad on the side. Graphics are not too wild. But not much in the way of detail. Okay. And then this one here. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Hi, Matt. Hey, Bob. Um, so this is also a matchbox. Not a lot of detail. A little bit of painted detail there, but nothing on the front or back. So all these first four cars are the $1 cars. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? And then, <clears throat> so they started making these... Mercury Cougar matchboxes. Wow, in the early 1970s, I wonder. Oh, you know what? It might actually have the copyright on the bottom of one of these. 2003. No, so they they changed the tool so tooling. It's called slightly, but this is the original one. And I, hey Artie, how you doing? Artie, you may like this because you had. I believe a 69, didn't you? Uh, if I remember, it was yours was either a 69 or a 1970, which we'll get to the 1970 in a minute. Okay? But you have basically two major die cast brands, Matchbox and Hot Wheels, that have been around for 50 years. No racing in this, Michael. These are these are classy cars. I know they're classy cars. So Hot Wheels usually does the wild graphics, and at a higher price point, they'll do a little bit more detail. But this is how popular this particular casting or model of car is. These two are new. They're available in the store today. You know, I mean, if you go out to get food, you can see them in the market. Hey, Richard, how you doing? And then when you step up from Matchbox and Hot Wheels, 
the first brand you come to is Johnny Lightning, which has been around since the late 1960s, I think 1968. And the Johnny Lightning always have a higher level of detail to the point where they have painted details. Let me move these for a second. They have painted details, but these ones go for between three and five dollars max for Johnny Lightning is what I, I believe I paid three dollars for this one. Hey Kathy, how are you doing? And so the difference between a Johnny Lightning and the Matchbox or, Honey, uh, or Hot Wheels is the little details. First off, I mean, you know, the painting around the windows, the uh, more realistic wheels. This one actually has rubber tires as opposed to the plastic. You can see the emblem. You can see the painted taillights, the grill. The, um, you can see the Mercury Cougar emblem there. I don't know how well this is going to focus. And on these, the hood's open, unlike um, Matchbox and Hot Wheels. And Artie, you had one of these, and a couple of you guys are car people, and you'll know that that is close to the Ford Blue, that these engines were actually painted. So this, for years, was considered one of the best die-cast cars. And again, you go from a dollar to three dollars to four. And then a number of years ago, there was a company called Ertl that made um, plastic models and so forth. Well, they also started making die-cast cars. Now, this one is a 1970 Cougar Eliminator. But, let me just... Most die-cast cars have no real definition on the bottom. This one's plastic. Even the Johnny Lightning has just a bare metal base. But then when you get to this, which is one of the most expensive die-cast cars I've ever bought, this one, with shipping cost me $12. I think it was $7 for the car and $5 for shipping. This one has license plates that you can read and you can see the amber indicators, um, the very detailed wheels and the white letter tires, and you can see the side markers. And again, there goes the plate number. What does that say? Oh, I can't read it. And this is one of the few brands that actually does an opening trunk. Hold on. Not as easy to do. Ah, there we go. This one has an opening trunk and a molded-in spare tire. See that? You can just barely see it in this light. There we go. All right. Now, the doors don't open on this. But again... The underneath, painted details, you can see the engine and transmission and the exhaust system. And again, the hood opens. And more detail than the Johnny Lightning, if I can get this lit up properly. There's more than just simple blue. There's black and there's a um, little bit of silver in there. Okay. And... This I got a few weeks ago. Now, this company, Ertl, no longer makes these. Um, I don't know if they're in business at all, but they no longer do what's called 164th die-cast cars, which would be your Matchbox, your Hot Wheels, your Johnny Lightning. Now, this is one of the brands that's more recent that is touted as the most detailed and it's called M2 Machines. Okay, and this is also a 1968. This uh, Johnny Lightning is a 67. This is a 1968. 
nice details paint wise tires and wheels just a simple 1968 like you'd see in a promotional and this one also has an opening hood with nice multicolored detail okay hold on there we go it's always tough to get air it's always tough to get the lighting and this one is one of the only in this scale to have opening doors. And so this one I got recently and was with the same price, $7, like this one. And there's one more, there are two more companies that make diecast cars to, that make love this level of diecast cars. But I don't have their versions. I think only one of them actually makes them. There's a co company called Greenlight. And I'll probably try and pick that one up if I can get it for less than $10. And then there's a company called Autolite that also makes these small 164 4-inch sc uh, scale, also referred to sometimes as 3-inch cars. Um... So, you know, I've been, I've been posting photos and I figure in the days of coronavirus and our government's, you know, lopsided response, people are getting burned out. And wouldn't you like to have a little bit of a distraction other than, you know, watching the panic and not having toilet paper in the markets and so forth? You know, I did it for myself and a few people liked the pictures. Um, but this is a car that I've, I've had a lot of cars over the years, but somehow I've never had a Cougar. Like I said earlier, I think Artie Kaufman had a red with black top. I just don't remember the year. I think it was a 69 or a 70. I know Bobby and I both wanted to buy that car when we were teenagers, but I, I, we, neither one of us had a driver's license. You know? So there's my little rant, my little video on diecast cars. My first and favorite. And I'm not going to open this one tonight. I was going to, but, you know, I mean, not that it'll... That's the funny thing is, when I bought some of these, like this one years ago, and, and this one, the Johnny Lightnings, I said, oh, well, they were appreciated. I'll collect them. They'll be worth something. And I even started looking up values. And so if I paid $4 a few years ago, 15 years ago, as you can see right there, uh, this might be worth 7 or $8, um, maybe as much as 10 So, yes, it's gone up in value, but the value to me is more than that, especially in these days. I mean, we could all be gone tomorrow. Uh, I'm eventually going to crack all of these open and play with them. And I'm fortunate that my husband, Randy, is not kicking my ass. Ah, what are you doing? They're all, because you have to see the living room. They're all over the living room. Um, but so uh, let me know in the comments what you think and whether you think I should do this again. And, you know, my 68 or not, 69, I was going to buy. Yeah, but yes, but somebody else uh, didn't think it would be a good idea. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this short little video. And thank you for your patience. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Everybody be safe. Stay in. Wash your hands. Social distancing. You know, this will all be over someday. Good night.